once being little, and we were at a park and playing, and uh, met some other kids, and we were playing, and went and kind of had lunch and came back, and the little girl said, you know, I can't play with you anymore because you're black and you're dirty. And, uh, you know, that that's clearly discrimination, and it was an articulation of something by children, but at the same time, they were getting that from, obviously, from adults. You know, the morning had been fine. Um, so That was in Richmond. Um, that was in Virginia. Mm -hmm. um, and so there are those kinds of experiences. Uh, similarly, when I was applying to get a mortgage for my first home, and I was talking to a mortgage uh, lender by phone we had never met, and we were going through the application process, and she was kind of ticking through what she thought she knew. And she was like, you know, female, check, um, Caucasian, check. And I said, no, I'm, I'm African American. Oh. We went through the rest of the form. Where was this? Um, this was in, in um, for I was buying a house in Alexandria, Virginia. Here in this area? Mm hmm in this area. And uh, I didn't get the loan. Um, the next uh, process I went through to apply for the loan, and I did get the loan, and it wasn't a problem whatsoever. Um, I had a similar experience for an apartment and arriving, and all of a sudden the price was different um, after I got there. And again, in this area in the 90s. Um, so, you know, racism still. Did you ever ask anybody about either one of those? Somebody that, you mean, even this woman that said. Uh, no, actually, I, I, I didn't. Um, and, you know, I was moving forward and um, got, getting the next loan and, you know, about the process of moving into my new home and knowing that for myself that there wasn't a good reason for me not to have gotten that loan um, and recognizing, you know, I'm smart, I understand what the process is and there are people who test for that kind of problem, um, but, you know, I, I didn't pursue that. Well, Northern Virginia and this area are very mixed with lots of different folks here. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you, on a day-to-day -day basis, do you find that you're welcome in most places around here? Oh, sure. Um, I, I do believe that. And sometimes you have interesting conversations with people. I remember after I moved into this particular house and um, in, uh, the neighborhood was just growing and just developing and having conversations with some neighbors. And um, we would have some very active and, and interesting debates. And there were times some of my other neighbors would say, I'm so glad that you said that. It was all very, it was perfectly civil. Um, I believed I had to articulate what I felt was right. I have to live with myself and hopefully um, people benefited from from what I had to say and I certainly found what they had to say interesting but for the most part um, I felt very comfortable. I've lived um, in Upper Northwest on um, in Cleveland Park and now I live in the Calorama Triangle area and obviously I lived in Northern Virginia and lived in Richmond so I think you learn from these experiences and you grow stronger as a result of them. You bring that information to the work that you do, um, and then I think that makes you stronger and makes you smarter in the work that you do. Have you had a family during this time? Uh, no, haven't gotten married yet. Um, looking forward to having a family at some point, though. I would really like to do that. How many years were you at the EEOC? I was there for a year, and one day I got a call um, from Senator office and I thought oh you know they must want something I'm the director of legislative affairs and so I took the call and it was the senators then chief counsel saying we have an opening and we'd love to talk to you about it and that is what launched me to the next phase of my career in, in terms of working for Senator Kennedy eight years eight years what did you do for him well I started out as his general counsel and I covered um, some of the, his civil rights uh, issues and women's health issues. And from there, it kind of grew and changed um, as the, the my colleagues on the committee, some left and other people came. So my portfolio expanded over time. And then about three years, I guess, into my tenure there, he asked me to become his chief counsel. So it was the chief counsel for him on the committee, which also included um, supervising and managing his Judiciary Committee staff. Just great. And what did you learn? I learned so much from that experience. Um, I think one, Senator Kennedy is an incredible mentor and teacher just by the way that he moves through the process. And I think people see him, and what they see is someone who is very clear, 
views, who's very passionate about the work that he does and what he wants to accomplish. And all of that is certainly true, but he is also someone, I think I mentioned this earlier, who understands how to cut a deal, when to negotiate, when it's appropriate to negotiate, and when it isn't, and how to get things done. He is the legislator's legislator. I mean, he believes in his job is to pass legislation to improve the lives of the American people and people around the world as they are also affected. So I really learned how do you work um, with people who may not share your point of view, but how do you reach a common goal? Um, so that, I think, was, was an incredible um, experience. And I think also he has such a great sense of humor um, about you know, not taking himself so seriously, even though he cares so much about the work, um, and also his belief in the system. I mean, just the Senate as an institution. And my appreciation for the institution grew and changed at the same time. So you've had a House and Senate and administration. Mm -hmm. What's your attitude about politics? You more cynical, less cynical? How do you feel about the system? Well, ultimately, I am an optimistic, glass half full kind of person. I mean, I've certainly seen things change. I think it has become more, um, the, the edges have become sharper and the elbows have become sharper, even from the period when I first entered um, going forward. Now, I can imagine some of my colleagues um, who were Republicans who I worked with said, oh, it was that way in the beginning. You were just in the majority then. But I think that the tone has become um, more sharp and, and that is disturbing um, and I think also and they're related to one another again going back to the respect for the institution even when you're in the middle of a battle about something that you feel really passionately about you can't undermine what is the framework of the institution and the rules um, that are, are there that help it work um, and make the Senate the Senate and the House the House um, so those things, I, I think, um, are disturbing trends. But at the same time, I think our system is incredible. It has allowed for awesome change over the last couple hundred years um, and will continue to do so. And people who, the people I work with, you know, there are always the jokes about people who work in federal government and the bureaucrats. They're people who are smart and who care about these things so deeply, and having an opportunity to work with them um, makes me believe that the system absolutely can work. As you know, you Google your name, mm -hmm. and up pops the sixth decision, uh, the whole business mm -hmm. about the judges back in the time you worked for Senator Kennedy and the right. affirmative action case. Mm -hmm. um, what do you say about that today? I mean, most people don't even know what I'm talking about right, right. now when they're listening to you. Right. Did you ever solve that in your own mind, that, that your role in that? Well, you know, I think what, what transcends all of that for me, and I think what people have to know, this is just, it's a life lesson, is that you have to know and understand your own integrity. So I always knew what we were doing. Um, and I always understood um, that Senator Kennedy um, and his staff, you know, myself and my colleagues, wouldn't make decisions um, that I think are, are for inappropriate reasons. Um, so I think that lesson in trusting yourself and trusting your instincts um, is a good one to have learned. Um, and I, I think I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. But it, just so we know, everybody knows what the issue was. Mm -hmm. There was a decision that had to be reached by the Sixth Circuit in Cincinnati. Tell me when I'm wrong about this. Okay. And that there was a judge ready to be nominated and to be confirmed up in the Senate. Mm -hmm. And Elaine Jones, who was the NAACP Legal Defense Fund mm -hmm. uh, attorney or whatever, what, what was her title? Is she was director of it? She was director of counsel. Came yes. to one of your colleagues on mm -hmm. Senator Kennedy's staff and said, hold off on approving that because we don't need a new fresh face on that sixth court as we're making the decision. The reason I'm bringing all this up is mm -hmm. you went to the University of Michigan. This mm -hmm. was about the University of Michigan. Right. Or if you felt that personally when you were in the middle of it. Um, my job at that point was to um, work with Senator Kennedy on judicial confirmations. Um, and I didn't think about it in terms of my allegiance to an institution. Um, I was thinking about it as a you know professional who was working with Senator Kennedy. And people come to... The, the senator, as they do all senators, with, with all kinds of requests. Um, so it was, you know, how do you convey information, um, you know, thinking about the broader judicial confirmation strategy, um, you know, make the best recommendations that you can.